Hi, I'm John Twist of University Motors, and I want to show you a little bit today about the MGA MGB three synchro gearboxes. Now, the three synchro gearboxes are fitted from 1954 to 1967. They've gone through a series of changes. Let me show you what some of those changes are, and also provide you with some of the cautionary comments about assembly. Let's take a look at the main shafts. The main shaft starts off originally with a slip-in drive shaft, sort of like in a modern American automatic. Later on, a flange was installed. You can see that these, these uh, main shafts are virtually the same, except this one's just a little bit longer to accept the flange that goes on the back. Let me show you another little change. This is the uh, third, fourth uh, slider here, the, uh, to catch the third, fourth sliding hub and originally it was cast all up in bronze like this so you can imagine the the uh, difficulty and cost in doing so later on they went to a separate piece here these pieces are completely interchangeable another small change was from a 10 spline uh, uh, first motion shaft to a 23 spline first motion shaft which occurred when it went from MGA to MGB. Another change that I don't have to show you right now is a larger diameter up, up here which is for the five main engine. These smaller shafts here are for the three main engine. Then in 1965 they went from the brass second gear synchro to the steel. Here it is in the Moss package. To the steel second gear synchro. Now there's a very distinct difference in these gears. Now, Danny's going to come down on them and I'm going to point this out. You see that the that the edge here comes straight around and here are the engagement teeth. Now, let's go to the other one. You see the scallops here? See the scallops are around the teeth? Okay, that's very different from from the other one which is the brass. So the scallop takes the steel synchro and the one which is smooth takes the brass synchro, okay, steel and brass, so that, that, that is the difference. Now let me show you another little thing that we've caught lately, and that is the, the um, lay shafts, not lay gears, but lay shafts. Here's one which is very worn, you can see over here on the right hand side, here my right, of course, this is very, very worn, you can catch that, and it's also worn on the other end, um, which is towards the towards the front of the uh, of the gearbox. These are definite uh, definite catchy points. Very very odd. This is a relatively new shaft. This is an old older shaft, and this is starting to show some signs of wear down here at the end. You can see a, a discoloration. Perhaps you can see it on the uh, on the screen here. There's a little bit of a discoloration. But I'm going to attack both of these with a file. Now we're going to take this one and cut him and you can see that I've made a very definite cut for the file. This is too soft. Now I'm going to go to a more original shaft and cut him. <laughs> He's hard. I can't cut him. I can't cut him. So before you fit your lay shaft to your gearbox you try to cut him with a file. And if he cuts, he's too soft. Don't use it. Well, this is today's instruction. I want to encourage you to send your pieces and parts. Send us your carburetors, your distributor. Send us your gearbox, your engine. Send us your whole car. Ship it. Bring it here yourself. Have your friend bring it. I don't want to sound like starving Marvin on your way to Florida, but stop. We need your business. Anyway, we look forward to talking to you tomorrow. I think tomorrow we're going to do... Uh, how to assemble points on a distributor because I just had a call a moment ago about how to assemble the points on a 25D distributor. Anyway, thanks so much. We'll see you guys later.